All right, so we'll begin reading again. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Rise up in splendor and be radiant. For your light has dawned, and Yahweh's glory now streams from you. Look carefully. Darkness blankets the earth, and thick gloom covers the nations. But Yahweh rises upon you, and the brightness of his glory appears over you. I'm going to stop there for a second. We're going to go back. What was the first words in that translation? We don't have it up there. Rise up. Everybody say, rise up. In splendor and radiant, for your light has dawned. Whose light? <laughs> Let's try that again. Whose light? Your light. Not my light. Your light. In my light. And Yahweh's glory. Whose glory? Yahweh. Now streams from you. Look carefully. Darkness blankets the earth, and thick gloom covers the nations. But Yahweh arises upon you, and the brightness of his glory appears over you. Nations will be attracted to your radiant light, and the kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. Lift up your eyes higher. Look all around you, and believe, for the sons are returning from far away, and your daughters are being tenderly carried home. Watch as they all gather together, eager to come back to you. Amen. So God, when he gave me this word, began to show me some things in the spirit. And uh, I actually saw what I think was a figure, and I think it was the Lord. I didn't see his face, um, but I saw him uh, walking, and I saw him uh, making this motion at first of like, rise up, like this motion of, and I saw him looking over uh, the body of Christ, or what appeared to be the church, and uh, unctioning them to rise up but as he continued to walk he stopped that motion and I literally saw him his finger being dragged in a pool of water and that's when I began to ask the Lord what's the pool of water and he said I'm stirring the revival waters I am stirring the revival waters he says but I'm also preparing the church for a new season and I'm causing you to rise up. Some of you are moving right now in what you feel like you're supposed to do. But God's going to take some of you to another level and to another place. And some of you already know this word that's coming out of my mouth is true because you've already begun to feel the restlessness inside of your spirit. And you've already begun to feel the attack of the enemy. And it's twofold. God is allowing some things to happen in your life. This is what he's saying prophetically to you right now. God is allowing some things to happen in your life because he's taking you to a new place and he's wanting to work on some stuff. How many here say, I, I probably got some stuff I need worked on? I do. My hand, if I could raise both of them right now, would both be raised. But God is stirring the revival waters and he's causing the church to rise up. And here's the thing. He's, I'm actually causing, and here's the thing. When God gave me this word, I was like, I kind of started feeling like, man, Lord, what am I, what, am, am I doing something wrong? And he's like, you're not doing necessarily anything wrong. He said, it's just time for something new. We've sat in the old long enough. And here's the funny thing. Remember I said, Stacy gets a bunch of words at the beginning of the year. Well, guess what one of the words was? Doing something new. I might have this backwards. Was it new? Yes. Apostle, the other day, uh, when she was teaching, actually prophesied that what change was coming. When change comes, you can't have change without something new. So, as a man, I'm a hunter and a gatherer. Right? Men? Come on, why are you all so quiet today? It's church, I know. We lost the hour of sleep. If you could see what I'm looking at right now, it's okay. This is, a, this is a word from the Lord. We like to hunt and gather things, right? It's who we are. It's what we do. We like to fix things. We're fixers. We're fixers. Right, guys? Something's broken. We grab the duct tape, and we fix it. When things are wrong in the spirit, we have that same mentality fix stuff 
But God's saying, I'm shifting you men in this season to rise up to a place where your only thing that's going to fix it is your relationship in me. And then I'm going to show you how to fix it. I'm going to show you how to fix it. The natural things need to are always present, but we are not all natural. <laughs> we're not all natural. <laughs> well, maybe we are. But we're supernatural, right? Are you supernatural? All right, so what was the first word? Does anybody remember? Resounding. Listen, I'm going to allow afford you the opportunity that you can change this acronym if you'd like a little bit. You can use the word resound, reverberate, resonate. I like resonate. But these words are all similar. Amen? Pastor's been talking about some things like we only do what we see the Father. Have you heard him say that a lot lately? I only do what I see the Father doing. That's what Jesus said. And and Damien was relating to the fact that that's what we should be doing. We should only be doing what we see Jesus doing. So is it fair enough to say that Jesus was only echoing the Father? So we have some things here before us. They're what? It's not a trick question. It's not a... Nope, there's nothing under that. It's a symbol. What's this? It's a symbol. Right, what's that? And what's that? All right, just make sure we're all on the same page. Now, I want to bash these things because I'm a drummer originally. I just want to crank on these things and just rip, tear into them right now. But uh, anyway. Made a sound, right? Do they sound the same? They don't sound the same. And here's one thing that God was showing me is in the fact that he wants us to resonate him is the sound doesn't always sound the same when it comes out of different vessels. Your sound is not my sound. But the one thing we have to recognize is that we're resonating God said this to me. He's like, don't skip over the small words. How many always skip over the ins and does and the ands and the little words? Come on, anybody do it? I do it all the time. But this in is very important. Because the only way you can resonate anything in the supernatural is if you're what? In Christ. And here's the thing. We're all differently. I actually have a bag of symbols somewhere else. They're black. I love black. They're black. But they make a different sound. They were made differently. When the person that uh, started making these symbols, these symbols are actually handmade, and we'll see if I can get this off here without taking forever. But they're handmade. And so they grab all the components of metals and bronze and copper and uh, a variety of other metals that they want to do so they can formulate a symbol and make it sound a certain way right and so the maker takes the time and he formulates uh, all those metals and he's like man i know if i if i do this this symbol will make this sound and that's what happens how many here are born again are you born again so the maker begin to breathe life into you when you accepted him. And he breathed something into you that was your sound. It's your makeup. This symbol cannot replicate what that symbol was made to do. This symbol can only sound what it was made to do. Now, I can quiet these symbols. So can I borrow you, Pat? Awesome. He hates sitting in the front row, by the way. So go ahead and bang on that cymbal. Keep going, man. That sounded awesome. Yeah. You're not going to hurt it. That doesn't any... (laughs) 
That doesn't sound anything like what it was meant to sound like, does it? But when we hold and we lie hold to stuff in our lives, we grab hold of that thing that was meant to resound and echo Jesus, but we're actually choking out the sound of the Father. And this spirit of rising up, and here's the thing where I always get in trouble when I teach or preach because I always give away my stuff for that. Every other preacher says, you should save that for the end because that's your big boom, that's your bang, that's your wow. But here's the thing, church. God isn't calling you to rise up. Somebody needs to hear this today. God's not calling you to rise up. He's calling the God in you to rise up and let loose of it. Hit it again. That's the sound. Well, what's your sound? And why do we keep choking out the sound? Has anybody ever here, by a show of hands, maybe willing to confess, like, sometimes I just hold on to my own symbol? Nobody. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, this half of the church. <laughs> Thank you. You can sit down, man. Thank you. You know, I said this last night at the Remnant, and I want to say it again. But many of you in this building raised your hand and said you were saved. Do you understand what a miracle that is? Like, do we really understand? Like, when we think of miracles, we have this thing. And listen, I believe in the God of miracles. And by the way, he just said even more of the supernatural is going to happen. And we'll get to that, Matt, in a minute when we talk about moving in supernatural empowerment. You were made for supernatural stuff because you have supernatural DNA and your sound is supernatural. As new believers in Christ, the, the old person is what? Is it? It's not dead when it's choking it out, isn't it? It got a little life in it. And that's the importance of what Pastor talks about all the time. What does he say all the time? This dead thing needs to die and I have to kill it every day. I'm paraphrasing. But that's what we're saying. This thing has to die in order for the new man to live. But you see that thing that happened that day when you decided to walk in the power of the Lord is that it was a supernatural event. And you have a sound inside of you that the world is waiting to hear. Amen? Somebody say amen. Not for my sake, but just because, hey, I'm getting it, man. I'm getting it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that this word that is coming forth, God, it just continue to do uh, what you intended it to do, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, um, it's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.20. I don't know if that thing's working or not. But it says, so we are Christ ambassadors. You've probably heard this scripture before. But listen to what this is saying in the New Living Translation. It says, God is making his appeal through us. Who is it through? We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. How many here today believe you're an ambassador for Christ? I'm going to ask you a really hard question. How are you doing on your job? Anybody here ever felt like, I'm a pretty bad ambassador? Maybe we won't say it that way. How many here feel like you know somebody that wasn't that great of an ambassador? It's easier to pick on somebody else, right, than it is yourself. But we're ambassadors. And one of the definitions of ambassadors is an authorized representative or messenger. What kind of messenger or representative? Have you been authorized? If you are in Christ, then you've been authorized to speak for him or to resound for him because we only speak and we only say what the Father is saying. Amen? Amen. The thing was is when God began to show me about this ambassador thing, he began to show me that, um, again, it's not so much that uh, you're a bad ambassador. Many of us just aren't really, uh, we're going to work really doing anything so we've come to work but we're not doing anything and so brother Pete back there in the back he worked at General Dynamics for years 
But I imagine, Pete, you're a loud talker. What would happen if you would show up to work and not do anything? Was it a union job? It was a union job, wasn't it? I picked the wrong person. Bad analogy. Oh, no. Who here does not work for a union? <laughs> Are you in a union? Oh, praise God. So if you went to work, and you, you drive a forklift, so if you sat on your forklift, and you, like, didn't do anything all day. Like, you drive that thing when you get there, and you drive over to the corner. And next thing you know, you're out. Lights out. How long do you think that would last? Not long at all. You probably wouldn't get paid, right? Like, but why? But what are you there for? Work. Yep. And so, if I saw that, and I won't say where he works, just for privacy reasons, <laughs> and we're on the Internet right now. <laughs> But I'd be like, man, that company has lazy employees. Right? That's what you saw. That's a representative of that company. He's a representative, and he's speaking for that company by sleeping on his forklift, hopefully not while you're driving. Right? Sleeping while you're driving. But God is just saying, listen, rise up. And do what I'm asking you to do, and do the work that I'm calling you to do. You are supernaturally empowered. Now, here's the thing. I have, I cannot heal anybody. I cannot save anybody. I can't do any of that stuff. And here's the good news, and this is why it's good news. You can't either. That takes all the pressure off. But all you have to be is a resonator. I love that term. It kind of reminds me of the Terminator. I'll be back. Right? Isn't that what he said? All you have to be is a resonator. Because when you accepted the Lord, he breathed into you a supernatural ability to do what? The works of God. And he said, guess what, guys? All this stuff that I've been doing, listen, there's scriptures, and I don't want to keep you till 2 o'clock because I could keep you till 2 or 3 o'clock, and you'd be like, oh, my God. Get out of here. But Jesus said, all this stuff I do, who could do it? You could do it. You could do it. And guess what? What did he also say? And greater. God is saying in this time of rising up, we've got to believe the word of God. Is it true or is it not true? I'm not trying, I'm trying to encourage you, but I'm trying to give you truth this morning. To stir your spirit. To take the place that is rightfully yours. Because in the stirring of revival waters, God wants to use every one of you in this building. That's what he does with his ambassadors, and we just read that in 2 Corinthians. I'm going to use you. I want you to speak for me, and we need to do it well, and we need to not be asleep in the corner, right? I've been asleep in the corner, guys. I'm not pointing the finger at you. This isn't a hard word. This is a word that should take the truth and make us get a fire, become on fire and get excited about this new season. I know we don't like new sometimes. And listen, I turned 50 this year. Woo! That is not as exciting as I thought. Like when I just said that out of my mouth. <laughs> I just turned 50. I just feel old. I, I read a post, I think it was, I forget who posted it on Facebook the other day, but they were saying like, well, 50 is the new 40. Praise God. The problem is, is then somebody said, well, 40 is the new 30. <laughs> and 30 is the new 20. And Okay, so I'm still old. At the end of the day, <laughs> 50 still old. Right? But here's the thing about the supernatural empowerment of Jesus. He does not care how old you are. He does not care what color your skin is. He doesn't care how broken you were before. Don't stand in front of the speaker. He doesn't care about any of that. We always try to qualify ourselves like, if I can just clean my act up, then I can be a 
representative for Jesus. Have you read the Bible? It's full of messed up people. And listen, man, they're my superheroes. I looked at those people of the faith, but they're just as messed up as we were. That's what makes it so awesome. Like, God, you can do this thing, this thing that you said, these miracles that you did. If you said that I can do them, then I can do them. And I love what uh, Brother Byron said the other morning when he opened up. You've got to open up your mouth, church. And rising up, you've got to learn to speak. And this year in the prophetic is the word of declaring some things. Everybody got on the bandwagon of 2020 vision because it was 2020, right? And it's cool. And listen, that's fine. But when you look up the Hebrew and you look to all that thing, that's not what this year means. This year means the year of declaration. That means speak it out of your mouth. Speak it out of your mouth. What did Byron say? He began to have high blood pressure. I believe, and I love the experience he talked about with the doctor. I would not want to be his doctor and have to deal with him, especially being unsaved, because I'm sure that guy's just like, what's wrong with this guy? But I loved his boldness. I hear what you're saying, doc, but I'm not receiving that right now. I'm not receiving that. I hear what you're saying. And what did he begin to do? His testimony was he began to speak out of his mouth to his body. Body come in line with the way that you were created to function. Well, what happened? No more high blood pressure. No more high blood pressure. Supernaturally empowered just because he was doing what he's been created to do. You have a mouth. And as much as Damien and I myself love to eat, it was made for more than eating. It's a method of communication. I love to eat, by the way. I could start talking about chicken and all kinds of stuff, and I'd lose you. I probably just lost half of you. Anyway, I'm sorry. So we're going we're gonna to reel you back in, and I promise I'm not going to keep you long today. But God is just wanting to do something. And when I started at the beginning, when I started at the beginning, begin to speak over your guys' lives the fact that some of you are already going through some stuff. You're in the midst of some stuff and there's some change happening and you're like, well, what's this about? And, and I hope you don't mind. Do you mind if I share? So this morning, we're in prayer here at the church and God just began to show me Angie. Like, and I saw God literally taking her. He's like, I'm taking you to a new place. And he's doing this for her. But he's also doing it for some of you as well. I'm taking you to a new place. But here's the thing. When I saw the picture, she wasn't resisting. She wasn't resisting. She was just walking. Now, she had this thing of walking, and I could see, like, a little bit apprehensively. Like, and I could see her, like, is this okay? The questioning sometimes. But she was still going. She was still going. You know, and God began to tell her in this thing, like, this is a new place. You've not seen it. And anything that you had in that work before isn't going to work in this new place, except for my word, because my word always works. But that old stuff, the old wine, and you can't take that, and hey, I'm going to put it in the new wineskins. That's the word. That's the word. So we got to stop putting the new wine into the old wineskins because it just makes a mess. When you drag that thing into the new season, all of a sudden, there's just not enough paper towels to clean up the wine. Don't cry over spilled milk. But what about the new wine? Because we wanted to hang on to something that was familiar to us. Hang on to the new wine skin. And allow that new wine to be poured in. But we're so apprehensive with change. And back to when I was talking about I turned 50. And I always heard, like, the older you get... <clears throat> Harder it is to change. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And all the other cute little sayings that there are. But you know, it may get harder sometimes in the natural to change. But in the supernatural, when you move with the power of God, change is easy because your eyes are always fixed on the Father. And that's what I saw Angie doing. She was apprehensive, 
But at the same time, her eyes were just as Jesus was leading her, just following him wherever he was going. That's what God is wanting to do. And so in this season, he also said, I'm allowing some things to happen. I'm allowing some stuff to happen in your lives. And here's where the thing is, is uh, I didn't get to hear all of it, but we have to be so full of the Holy Spirit. We have to be able to discern because not everything is the enemy. Not everything is the enemy. God said he has his hand in some of this stuff. And this is where the spirit of discernment, because do you want to rebuke the hand of God? So pray. When you begin to have something, make sure that you're praying on that thing and God begin to reveal to me, is this you? Are you walking me through something or is this the enemy? Because again, we don't want to, we don't want to rebuke the hand of God. Like, hey, yo, that's me. <laughs> I'm taking you this way. Come on. You know it's true. I've been there like, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit embarrassingly, but I've rebuked some stuff, and God's like, hey, yo, dude, that's me. Yeah, God talks real to me. I'm sorry. And I said, dude, I get uh, chastised, but like, God calls me dude. Like, dude, that's me. Is it okay to be real? <laughs> God's tired of fake, man. He's tired of fakeness. He just wants us to be real. And the power of God, God just wants to use you guys in this season. And there's so many scriptures um, that I could just go on and on about. I'm just really feeling held back by the Spirit right now. I like to not rush through a bunch of that. And maybe later on, God will allow me to come back and kind of teach this more um, but this morning he's calling upon you guys like in a serious manner like listen I created you I love you and however you're feeling about yourself doesn't matter but I need you to rise up and walk in that place that I've called you that sound that I made I'm calling upon it right now and I need you to resonate what you hear me do. With no apathy, but with a greater appetite to say, yes, Lord, I'll obey. Because there's people out there that are blind. There's people out there that are broken. And when Jesus says, I need to heal them, but he doesn't have a vessel that's willing to sound for him, and he has nobody to be an ambassador could he do it? Yeah. But how does he want to do it? It's in the word. He wants us to be those vessels that he speaks through. Do you believe the Bible's true today? Do you believe that you're supernatural, empowered to do those things? This is where it all starts, and this is why Damien's been talking about faith. Where's your faith today? I've used this analogy before. What would you do if you went to the post office? And there's those beautiful steps. Who here has ever seen the post office here? They got all those great steps, right? It's a miniature version of the Rocky Balboa steps, right? That's what I call it. Those are the steps I want to run. I don't want to run the real Rocky stop here. <laughs> Lord, help me. But you get to the post office in the morning because you have an important piece of mail that you want to get to somebody. And sitting on the step is a paralyzed man. And you walk up those steps and you walk, you start to walk by him. And as you walk by him, the Holy Spirit simply just says, I want you to pray healing. And that's all you hear the Spirit say. What are you going to do? Do you see if you don't have the faith and you don't believe that the word of God is true, you'll never stop long enough to even consider that you heard the Holy Spirit and you'll talk yourself out of it immediately. But if you have the faith to believe that I'm a resonator because I am live my life in Christ and I am supernaturally empowered to live out the word of God in front of this world, then when the Father says, I need you to stop and I need you to pray, you'll stop and you'll pray because the results are not in your hand and you don't have to worry about it. God, what you say, what you want to do, it's up to you. 
what you heard, you sometimes we hear things that we don't hear. I don't know why the Holy Spirit's saying this right now. Sometimes we hear things that we don't really hear. When you don't have faith to believe that the Word of God is true, sometimes what we hear is what, hey, I want you to stop and pray for that man that he would be healed, and I'm going to heal him. But that's not what God said in our story. In our story, God just simply said, I want you to stop and pray for healing. Boy, it's quiet in here today. God's challenging us, man. He wants you and he needs you. But when we don't hear correctly and we don't have the faith to believe that we are capable beings because of the Christ in us, we get so misconstrued. We don't stop or we begin to think, oh, well, what if God doesn't heal him? Come on. How many here has God ever asked you to pray for somebody and the thoughts just start stirring in your mind? Well, what if it doesn't happen? What if this? What if that? What if that? What is that? What are the what ifs? They're doubt. They're speaking something to you. They're speaking something to me. I've been there. But let's stop doubting. Like, how big is your God? Man, God has been challenging me so much. How big do you really think I am? You know, the Word of God says that no man can know. And Pete and I were talking about this the other day. At lunch, we were talking about the love of God. But the Bible says that nobody can totally understand the heights, the depths, and the widths of the love of God. That's just one attribute. It's one attribute. The love of God is just one attribute. And the Word of God says that you can't even fully understand that. And sometimes you think, oh. That. No, it's like, well, how big are you, God? How big are you? How big is this thing living inside of you? Anybody been broken before? Is God bigger than your brokenness? Anybody ever have a bill you couldn't pay? Is God bigger than that bill you can't pay? Anybody ever have a troubled relationship broken marriage I don't know what God wants to do but God is still bigger than those broken things is God bigger than blindness is God bigger than cancer God I just pray right now God for the spirit of revelation of this thing God, you're calling us right now. And God, even in the midst of uh, what's going on in this room right now, God, you're calling us to rise up. God, so I thank you for a release of that spirit right now, God. Those people that are moving, God, and you're taking them to a new place, God, I thank you that you are with them. God, for those of us that have apathy, God, and we're just not sure. God, I pray for the spirit of revelation to begin to fall on them right now in the name of Jesus. God, this isn't my word. This is the word that you gave, God. We want to begin to resonate in supernatural empowerment under providence. So, God, I thank you that we don't have to do this thing alone, Father God. We don't have to do this thing by ourselves, Father. God, I thank you that you're with us everywhere we go, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you that you're in our midst right now, God. And just as we be quiet for a minute, God, I just pray that you, as eyes are closed right now, that you just begin, God, to minister to these people. I cannot minister to them, God, but you can. You know where every person is in their walk with you, Father God, but I know that you're saying, in this next season of rising up, there's greater to be had. I want to read a couple of scriptures to you. We talked about resonating in supernatural empowerment. You've been empowered by God. But the other part said, under providence. And Psalms 91.1 says this, when you sit enthroned, when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. 
God, I pray this scripture get into us. When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. This is what verse 4 says in the, in the Passion. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty, and you can hide there. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. The word providence literally means the act of providing or preparing for future use or application. This word is not a word for six months down the road. This word is a word for right now. And some of you are sitting in your seats right now like, God, I, I don't even, I can't get there. I just hear somebody saying that like, God, I just, where I'm at in my life. And all I see is God reaching his hand right down there. And he's like, you can't get there. But I can take you there. And this is where the thing is about lean and focus and life and rest takes all the pressure off. Back to what we said earlier. You can't rise up on your own. And we're not, God is not asking you to rise up. He's just calling on the spirit that's living inside of you. He's calling on the deposit of himself inside of you to begin to rise up. 